And that of this message, when you don't understand, trust God. Taken from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, from verses 1 to 11. So I encourage for everyone to please bring your Holy Bible with you every Friday, the hard copy. It says here in verse 1, the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, O oh Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is a strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Then the Lord answered, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if I were told. I am raising up the Babylonians, the ruthless and impious people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwelling places not their own. They are feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their horses are swifter than their cavalry gallops headlong. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like a vulture swooping to the boar. They all come bent on violence. Their horses advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. They deride kings and scoffs at rulers. They laugh at all fortified cities. They build earthen realms and capture them. Then they sweep fast like the wind and go on. Guilty man whose own strength is their God. Blessed be the leading of God's infallible word. Bow with me in prayer. O most gracious and loving Father, we are so thankful just to listen to the beauty of your word. Thank you so much for this freedom that we have in this place of God. Father, we come unto you. We submit to you, O Lord God, our whole being. And we just pray, coming upon, that let our great teacher, your Holy Spirit, enable us to see the very message that you want us to receive today. Lord, guide us that we may be careful in studying your word. And so we will be careful in hearing your word. And so we will be careful, Lord God, in obeying your word. Praise us, Panginoon, that we will be able to do so. Father, to you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. By way of introduction, brothers and sisters, all of us have stories to tell. Right? Some stories of your life can be more dramatic than the other. Diba? My life is not a story about me. You heard me right. And your life is not a story about you. It is a story about who God is and what He does in our life. And brothers and sisters, I am very thankful to God that I am not the author of my own personal story. That is something that is wonderful, that you are not the author of your own story, because we only have one author, and that is God alone. So since I start preaching here, brothers and sisters, my life becomes an open book. Sa bawat isa sa inyo. About my family, about my parents, about my siblings. And even in our home builders, we discuss further. We discuss 
problems that we encounter as a couple, difficulties, trials, hardship, and every family. And so for what? For us to pray to God and so we can act accordingly. Right? And so today, brothers and sisters, there is another story, God's story of my life that I want to share with you today. This is an evidence of God's grace in my life. Do you know, and I know that you know, my mother died at the age of 26 when I was 10 years old. And so the siblings has to be separated. My younger brother has to go to my relatives, the father's side, the somebody's. And my younger sister has to go to my relatives, the mother's side. And I have to stay with my father when I was 10, from 10 years old. And down to that, I remember Paul. Me and my father always rent a house. If you know a wall, you will put in some side jam because that will be cheaper to rent. So from one place to another, kung saan yung mas mura na yung kita namin ng papa ko, we moved to that place. And while doing that, brothers and sisters, I'm pursuing my vocational course doon po sa Occidental Mendo. And so the highlight, brothers and sisters, of this story is this. No kami po nakatira ng aking father when I was 18 years old, yung bahay namin, dalawang side ng pader, ng kapit bahay, so that you will have only two sides to take care of. Isang side dito, isang side dito, bahay na po yan. And I was sleeping outside the room. And one morning, I was awake by someone who is shouting, Someone who is crying and she is calling me, Abel, 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 Abel. It was very early morning. When she got into the, 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 our house, she told me, She is a girlfriend of my father. She is a girlfriend of So, she is Amen. So, recorded po ito. So, girlfriend po siya ni Papa. She is very old. Older than my dad. So, she is calling me, Abel, Abel, Abel. And when she reached to me, she told me, Abel, your dad is gone. So, from that time on po, mga kapatid, I just awake. And I don't know what to say. I didn't even remember to even say him a word. So they took me, they bring me to the hospital, and there I found my dad lying down sa isang bed, lifeless. And that ends there. My word collapsed. Brothers and sisters, one of the things that is so difficult for us one of the hardest things, and I know brothers and sisters that I'm not the only person here who have lost loved ones. Okay, I know that and I understand that. But to those who have lost their loved ones, you can relate to this. The hardest thing is about responding to them, especially sad effect. Like that. Why? Because the finality of the situation, you cannot make shit anything. You cannot hope that, Lord, this will get better. No, that is not going to happen. Because that ends right there at that point. Even you compare this to someone who has severe illness, doon sa may mga malalang sakit, someone who is in the form of a cancer, you still something that you can hold on to that. Maybe tomorrow, the next treatment, it might work and she might be okay. But brothers and sisters with death, 
There is no negotiations. Everything stops right there. I can even remember when I was at the entrance of the hospital, Lord, from my heart, give me at least one day, half day, 30 minutes, 10 minutes for my dad, with my dad so that I can say the things that is in my heart. But brothers and sisters, that moment will not come. That moment ends right there. And there is no turning back on it. There is no hope after that moment. And so why I'm saying this, brothers and sisters, I was left with nothing. I don't have a bank account. I don't have a bicycle. My father po is a traveler, as I mentioned before. He brings one passenger to another. He is a tricycle driver. I don't have the tricycle because hindi naman sa amin yun. I don't have a land to cultivate. I don't have a house and lot to stay in. And I have here the unfinished schooling, which I don't know how it's going to be. And I have my brother from Sambales who I'm not seen for many years and he is coming back. And so my sister also will be coming back. So this is what I've done. And also my uh, my girlfriend, not girlfriend, niligawan ko pala si Miss Lord at that time. She was there. You know, the connection brothers and sisters, this is not in this line to this, but I see the connection now. Why God let me know Lorna was there in that place in Occidental Mindoro? Just to be sideful. Lorna was, was with me during my high school time. Okay, and the last time that we saw each other is during the graduation day when sinabita niya pa ako ng flowers. I don't know about niya sinabita ng flowers. <laughs> Sabi niya kahapon, kasi wala lang sasabit sa akin. Siguro love niya na rin ako ng tamang. Okay, so good po nakasmile na kayo. So yun po, now the moment now, after the graduation, I never seen her. But I know that there is something here, and I've never seen her. You know, one day, it is like a couple of months before my father died, na isa kanya si Miss Lorna. And he told me, na mo yung tubay, na, do you remember yung girl na nagsabi sa iyo ng flower, yung kasalamin? Yes, pa, sabi ko, si Miss Lorna. So for two years, I was in the same municipality. We never met. I never seen her. And she never also didn't see one akita in the same place. So it was all then. After that, I moved, I, I went to her place. I said, I'm going to sketch it. I'm going to sketch it. And like their brothers and sisters, I see that the connection is there. When I met her in a couple of months, my father died. I don't know how God did, how God, paano ginawa ni God John, but this is how it is connects to me. This is how it is important to me. Right now, I don't know, I don't have any idea what you are going through in life. Some of us here have lost their loved ones, their relatives a family member. Some of us here have lost their job. Some of us here, their health is in bad condition. You might have your broken savings. Okay? You might have a broken relationship with your spouse, a husband and wife, a father to their kids, a mother to their kids, or to your friends. But brothers and sisters, there is one thing that I want to tell you. I know and I am sure with biblical authority that God is in control. 
I know that you know what I mean, brothers and sisters, when I preach to you a couple of times. Because that preaching is a kind of a preparation for us for this message today and for the coming weeks that is a foundation that we learn that God is in control of all things, that God is in control over sin, that God is all-knowing God. And the fact that God is all-knowing and that He is in control, brothers and sisters, the question is this, what it means to you? So for a moment, brothers and sisters, I want you to hold on to this truth that God knows what you are going through. God knows that and He is in control. So it does not matter, brothers and sisters, what is your problem right now. It doesn't matter what is the issues in your life right now. It doesn't matter what is the cause of your discouragement. Why you are so depressed right now. It doesn't matter. Because, brothers and sisters, whatever it is, the principle that we are going to discuss today transcends all of these things. It goes beyond all of these things. It's not specific to any hardship that we are going through. It's not specific to a death of your loved ones. It's not specific to the illness of your relatives, of yourself. It's not, it's not related even to your finances. This transcends all of these things. And the principles that we are going to discuss today that makes this subject so wonderful. Amen, Puba. So we are so excited to hear this. Amen? Amen. Are we excited? Amen. Praise the Lord. So here's the thing, brothers and sisters, just to begin. Every one of us, all of us here, look at the person next to you. Come on. Okay, kung mahiya. Every one of us here has a biblical knowledge and enough common sense that we must trust God. Right? All of us here knows that we are commanded to trust God. But here is the question. Here is the problem. And here is what we need, brothers and sisters. We need to know how to trust God. How do I trust God in trying times? Even when things that I don't understand, how do I trust Him? Now think about it this way. Nakita na po kayo nito. Do you know what is this? This is a jigsaw facet. Right? So you have a box full of jigsaw facet pieces. They are mixed together. They are all jumbled in together into this box. And they are not in order. And what you do is you pick one of the pieces. You look at these pieces. These individual pieces doesn't make any sense at all. Can you see any connection? Or imagine that you are holding that pieces. Can you see a connection to this? Can you see that this can be related to anything? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. These individual pieces, this individual piece, okay, it doesn't make sense if this is isolated to its context. But brothers and sisters, if you put this in a picture in front of you, you can see that one piece at the top right corner, uh -uh, you will say something, I can, there's something that this piece can be relayed into another. I can see that there is a connection where I can put this piece to this picture, to this context. Because brothers and sisters, the piece is clear when it is seen in the context. Nakuha po natin. Do we understand this? And it's the same thing in our life, brothers and sisters in the Lord. It's the same thing in our life. You know, 
there is sometimes hardship in our life that we think that there is no sense at all. There are difficulties, hardship, persecutions, trials in our life, even the situation that you have right now, that you think that there is no sense, that there is no connections at all. Because you are looking on that particular problem, the particular difficulties alone. And you are not seeing the whole picture of it. However, brothers and sisters, if you take that situations of yours right now, and you bring that to the principles that we are going to discuss today, you can say this into your heart, that you have a context, that you can see now the relation, why this is happening in my life. We have to see this overarching principle brothers and sisters that we are going to discuss today you can say that i have enough context to inform my heart that i can trust god even this very difficult situation even i don't understand it all and that is crucial to understand brothers and sisters this is something that you might hear for the first time and hear it what it means. These eternal principles that we are going to discuss today will give us a picture. It will give us a context to actually trust God. Even nothing changes in your situation. Even nothing changes in your situation. By this principle that what we are going to discuss, you will be able to tell to your heart that I can trust God in this very moment. Even nothing changes. So here is Habakkuk. His name means love and grace. So alam po natin Habakkuk is a prophet. Okay? God gave him a role of a prophet in time when the nation of God's people, Judah, was in the serious decline. Spiritually, they are in chaos. Violence, injustice are all over this nation of God, this people of God. And Habakkuk is a loving man of God. He was a sensitive man. So loving in the sense that he loves God, he loves the law, and he loves the people of God. And you know what happened when he entered into the scene here in the life of the nation of Israel, of Judah, he see the people of God, the covenant people of God was walking in the opposite direction. And you know what he did? He prayed, Lord God, act on this. God, do something in this. And what, what did he find in return? Ano po yung kasagutan na nakita niya sa Panginoon? It was just a divine silence. And it seems for him that God is sleeping and that God is doing nothing. But as we can see, Habakkuk conversation with God, we can see from the point that he was discouraged and God carried him to a point to have a full of joy even nothing changed in his situation. So the book of Habakkuk po is a dialogue between Habakkuk and God. We can see here in the following chapter and the following verses, Habakkuk prays and God responds. Habakkuk prays again and God responds. In the final chapter, where Habakkuk lift up his prayer, and this is what happened, brothers and sisters. Right here from the start, here is what I wanted to see. This is something that is very difficult. Something that really need a spiritual health. There are difficulties that sometimes we encounter in our life, right? There are trials, and just like you, katulad nyo rin po ako, sometimes po when we encounter difficulties in life, how do we pray? Lord, please change this situation. 
Lord, please change these circumstances. Lord, please change my department. Lord, please change my boss. Oh, Lord, please change my colleagues. Lord, please change the receptionist. God, please change that office boy. God, please change my, my kids. God, please change my husband, my wife. Whatever it is, brothers and sisters, we are focused towards manipulating our circumstances. Right? We are so focused towards manipulating the people around us. In one degree or another, this is what we are doing. When we encounter problems, Lord, please change this. Brothers and sisters, I, we, did, we, we, did not, we don't deny. We know that God welcomes the prayer of His children. Right? God welcomes this kind of prayer. Lord, help me. Lord, change this. God welcomes this. But brothers and sisters, here is the thing. If you are going to learn how to trust God, you need to embrace something that is really basic. Right here from the start. You cannot understand how to trust God unless this general overarching principle that we are going to discuss is settled in your mind. Brothers and sisters, your circumstances do not have to change at all in order for you to experience a fullness of joy in the presence of God, even in the midst of what you're going through. Your circumstances does not need to be changed in order for you to experience the fullness of joy in the presence of God. And that is a very important principle that we can carry on in our entire life. Why, brothers and sisters, we are coming to that. Excited na ba manaman yung sagot? Brothers and sisters, our circumstances don't need to be changed. The people that burden you doesn't need to be changed in order for you to experience this full of joy. Those office made of yours doesn't need to be changed at all. Even the attitude of your boss doesn't need to be changed. Because if you are waiting for your circumstances to be changed, you will not understand the fullness of what it means how to trust God. Eh, paano pa hindi dumating, hindi nagbago yung boss mo? Kasi nga, hindi ka naman lumilipag ng company. <laughs> Hello? Your circumstances doesn't need to be changed at all. Right? So stop praying that your boss will change. For you, it is enough the holy character of God. That's enough for you. That is more than enough than anything else, brothers and sisters. Now the question is, how do you trust God? Well, let's take this now. Inahaba-haba ko siya. Para ma-excite kayo lahat. So let's get into this. The very first key to trusting God. Very first key today. Number one, God's ways are not your ways. And this is where we are going to start. This is the starting point. And this is something that I want you to learn something really basic. Listen. God is God and you are not. I'm saying this out of love. God is God and you are not. I hope that you'll sing in brothers and sisters. I don't have capacity to engrave this to your heart, but at least into your mind, let this be a principle to you. God is God and you are not. And here in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 1, this is the prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. 
Okay? And the Habakkuk burden starts in verse 2 down to verse 4. Sabi niya John, How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or I cry to you, violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destructions and violence are before me, and strives and conflict abounds. Remember po, Habakkuk is a prophet of God to his people. And what he see is a total chaos. And what he see is a total disorder. Sinful, okay, people are in front of him. And these are his witness. Ito yung nakikita niya pang araw-araw na buhay. And he, as he continued to pray for this, Lord, why you look, why you make me look in this injustice? Bakit pinapabayaan mo na makita ko ang mga bagay na ito? And in verse 4, he says, that, Therefore the law is paralyzed, the justice never prevails, the wicked hem in the righteous, so that justice is perverted. So we can see here that Habakkuk is totally discouraged. And notice this, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I understand that many of us here have been fighting with a problem in a long period of time. And you have been praying for it. Honestly, you have been praying for it. And look in Habakkuk. What did he say here? As he poured out his heart. How long, O oh Lord, will I call for help and you won't hear me? He had been praying for the extended period of time. And even before we open up the book of Habakkuk, the beginning verses, he has been praying for it. That is why he is frustrated. That is why he is very disappointed. That is why he was being puzzled. Lord, I've been praying for this. Why you are not responding to me? I've been praying for this. Why you are not listening? And what did he find in return again? It seems for him that God is not doing anything. There is no answer. And here is what I wanted to see, brothers and sisters. Habakkuk thought that God should act on this. Habakkuk thought that God should use his omnipotent power to change the situations that he is witnessing in front of him. Habakkuk prayed for it. Habakkuk thought that these things is going to change. But mind you, brothers and sisters, nothing happens, nothing changes. And it seems that God was sleeping. This is what Habakkuk thought. God is not doing it in Habakkuk ways. God, I think you should be doing this. But that's not what's happening. And brothers and sisters, there is a conflict between what Habakkuk thought and what God thought. There is a conflict with one another. So brothers and sisters, let me go back to the same question. How do you trust God? Start right here. Start right in this point. This is very humbling, brothers and sisters. But remember this. God does things in His own way. God does what He thinks is right. God directs all things according to His wisdom, according to His eternal purpose. And do you know what, brothers and sisters? He doesn't submit the idea for your approval. He doesn't need your affirmation to that idea. And even brothers and sisters, God had never treated by your rejection. And you ask me why? Lord, why? Because He is God. And that's what God should do. Because He rules. Because this is His. Because this is His purpose. 
Now, brothers and sisters, I know what is playing around now in your mind. You might think that it's very hard for us to accept this. Right? But brothers and sisters, what does it mean that we call Jesus our Lord? What does it mean that we call Him our teacher? What does it mean that we call Him our God? It means, brothers and sisters, that He has an absolute right to do anything that He wants in your life. God has an absolute right to do anything exactly what He wants in your life. And watch this. Take note. Even if it hurts. Even if it hurts you. Brothers and sisters, we are called to submit to Him. We are called to obey Him. Even to those things that is contrary to our desire. We are meant to obey. You remember this text, Isaiah 58. It's one of the greatest statements of the essence and, om of, and omnipotence of God, omniscience of God. You remember this. It says here, God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Think about it this way, brothers and sisters. Here we are up to age work. God created us, right? Did I agree? I will share this to you. There is one little boy during the bedtime. Niya. And he asked, he asked his mom, sabi niya, Mom, where did you came from? And so the mother took the Bible, okay, here is so and so, we are created in the English of God. Okay, and this is what happened, and this is what happened. So it is biblically. And the kid was so happy. And the following morning, his dad dropped him to the school and picked him in the afternoon. And along the way, he asked his dad, Dad, where did we came from? His dad answered, from a monkey. <laughs> Eto na! Pag-uwi nung bata. Pagdating nung tatay at nung bata, Mommy, Mommy! You, you told me last night that we came from this so and so that we are creating the image of God. But now I just asked that he said we came from the monkey. <laughs> then her mother told him, this is very simple. Enough. I already explained you my side. Now your dad explained his side. So brothers and sisters, this is the way we apply this. Look at this text. Some of us here are 18, 6, 20, 30 years old, 40, our life began like 50, we have 65 here. Fathers and sisters, God has been all-knowing God from the beginning of time. It means, fathers and sisters, can't you say that God is high above all? Can't you see that God is high above you? And so He has the light to act. Okay? To act. He has the light with all His, with all his omniscience. Okay? With, that God is all-knowing. He has the right to do anything that He wants. Because brothers and sisters, we cannot even question how God created Ex nihilo. And we cannot comprehend that. And brothers and sisters, mind this. This is so beautiful. This is so wonderful a statement. That our thoughts are not like His thoughts. So for many of us, 
I understand that our life is not working out the way that you want. Sometimes po it hurts and sometimes it is painful. Nasa dami-dami ng problema, gusto mo na lang is matulog. Just to forget of the problem. But then when you sleep, you have a nightmare. And you, you've been awake again, you have to start the same whole cycle over again. And you have been praying for that. Brothers and sisters, I've been there also. I understand how you feel. And, so, and here is the thing here that I want you to see. Habakkuk has been praying for this. God, why? God, I don't understand why this is happening. It's the same thing with us. When we are going through those hard times, we are praying, and it's been a long period of time, we have been praying the same, honestly to God, Lord, why this is happening to me? And I don't understand. But brothers and sisters, here is the thing that I want you to get this. You are not meant to stay there. You need to grow. You need to step forward to come to the point that you are not being praying in confusion. That you will grow, brothers and sisters. You are not meant to stay there. And you have to expect this as all of us Christians. You should expect and anticipate in life that there are things in our life that we don't understand. Things that will confuse us. Things that will tell yourself, that you will say to yourself that this is something awkward. That this is something nonsense. Why all these things is happening? You should expect that, brothers and sisters. Why? Because you have your own ways, you have your own thoughts, and you have your own principle. As a human being. But the Bible is teaching us that God has His own way, that God has His own thoughts, that God has His own purpose in your life. And this is what we are learning from this. Brothers and sisters, when things are contrary to your desires, and you know that God is orchestrating your life, He is directing your life according to His will, you may leave this kind of principle. You will take this principle, brothers and sisters. I know as a general principle that there will be things in my life that I don't understand. And the Bible is teaching me of this. That there are times in my life that there is a situation where Lord, I cannot comprehend why this is happening to me. But the Bible is teaching me, Lord, that those men of God have walked the same path before me. And so, Lord, I go away to trust you. And do you know what, brothers and sisters? This is going to make sense. Because the fact that inisip mo na walang sense, it just makes sense. Narito kayo. The fact na sinabi ng isipan natin that there is no sense, it makes sense. Because God has His own way. Because God is God and you are not Nagkakaintindihan po ba tayo? Amen. Amen. So what we are going to do, brothers and sisters, first, in trusting God, we have to set aside our problems for a time, for a moment. Set aside that. Okay? And you stop thinking, okay, of your problem just to fix the things. First thing first, brothers and sisters. Kasi po pag puro problema lang iniisip mo, hindi mo na inaiisip si God. Puro problema na lang sa isipan natin. And there's nothing going on, it cannot be resolved. And you just keep on thinking and thinking. You have to take a break on that. And you know, brothers and sisters, think in this way. When you are in those situations, 
think that God thinks differently than you do. Think that God thinks differently than you do. He thinks bigger than you do and He thinks better than you do. And this kind of perspective, you will say that I'm allowing God a possibility that He knows what He is doing. It creates patience in you to allow God more time to disclose yung faithfulness niya sa buhay natin. Brothers and sisters, the fact that we don't understand those things that is happening in our life doesn't suggest that there is something wrong with God. It suggests only that there is something wrong with our understanding. And the fact that I don't get this brother a bit, I don't get this kind of brother, I don't understand this brother. You know what brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong in God's way, there is nothing wrong in God's thought. The only thing, brothers and sisters, is you don't get that because God's ways are not your ways. Till you. That ends there. Second point is this. I love this one. God's ways are often hidden. The Lord's answer to Habakkuk prayer, look at the nation and watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if I were told I am raising up the Babylonians here brothers and sisters as our last text what God is saying here notice he didn't answer have a good question why, why, why God just told Habakkuk that I am doing something. And in verse 5 and 6, we can see here that Habakkuk, look at the nations that is rising up from afar. There are some nations rising up, the Babylonians, marching up, strengthening their forces. And they are coming. And they are coming. I know that my people are sinful, says the Lord. I know that they are corrupt. And here it is, that nation that, see you, that you see rising up, I will tell you what they are look like. And it says here in verse 7, Sabinya, they are feared and dreaded people. They are low to themselves and promote their own honor. They mock kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at all fortified cities by building earthen realms. They capture them. So what God is saying here, Habakkuk, these one powerful nations, the Babylonians, these Chaldeans, they are not only strong, they are also ruthless. They are also merciless. And there is no human instrument that could stop them. And watch this, Habakkuk. Look what I'm doing. I'm strengthening them. I'm allowing them to have all this strength. And look at this following verse. That no one can stop them. It says here in verse 11, Then they swim fast like the wind and go on. Alam niyo po yung tinaanan ng tornado sabi doon? They swim fast like the wind and go on. Na parang walang tinaanan. Guilty people whose own strength is their God. And this time, they will sift through whom? To the people of God. They are going to sift through Judah. They will do, as they have been conquering nations all along, they are also conquering my people. And God knows this nation. So what he is saying here to Habakkuk in verse 5, I will just mention here, Habakkuk, look among the nations, observe, be astonished, be amazed. Here is your problem, Habakkuk. You only see a part of the picture. There is a jigsaw puzzle here, Habakkuk. You just have a two pieces of that jigsaw puzzle and you think that you know everything. You don't know 
Habakkuk. There is a picture, there is some information that you don't have. There is something that you need to know. And Habakkuk, do you think that I'm not doing anything? I am in the process of changing the word history to address the very problem that you are praying for. Habakkuk thought that God is not doing anything. But God is just answering that prayer. Brothers and sisters, Habakkuk had absolutely no idea what he was talking about because the truth of the matter is behind the scene. God sees everything. He knows everything and working it all together according to the counsel of His will. And for our purpose today, everything that God was doing, Habakkuk could not see that. There is so much more going on in the reality, brothers and sisters, that is going on in, the God's, in, in God's purpose. And when those times hit you, and those things that hurt you, brothers and sisters, we need to trust in this way, that we need to humble ourselves enough and admit in ourselves that we don't see the hidden hand of God, that He is working behind the scene in our situation. We have to step back and remember something that is basic here. Something about God. When we ask this, who is God? God is the God who controls all things. Amen. In the book of Daniel, it teaches us that the nation rise and fall at the hands of God. Even our life is in the hands of God. And here's the thing. The accusations of Habakkuk is not true. God was acting. It was just simply hidden from Habakkuk's eyes that God acts and works all things according to His ways that you cannot see. And just for us to ponder the question that I'm going to leave to you, how does that help you to trust God? How do you take this and inform and shape your heart to say that you can trust God. You know, brothers and sisters, this is very simple. This is very basic. And yet, it needs humility. God's ways are not your ways. And God's ways are often hidden. We don't know the full story. That's the point. And when you take that, principle we could say that Lord help us Lord teach us Lord I need your help because your ways are higher than my ways right if we can come to that position that Lord I need you more into my life I need to give you more time to unfold your faithfulness in my life so brothers and sisters, we are just in verse 11. And there is coming more as we unfold this truth of trusting God in trying times. Bow with me in prayer. Father, first of all, we will pray for those who don't know you, those who don't have a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you would open their eyes, their heart, to recognize the value of the atonement of Christ Jesus and put their faith in Him for their salvation. Father, as we consider what it means how to trust You, our prayer, Lord, that You will grant us grace you will grant us mercy to see the whole picture of God that we can say that Lord your ways is not my ways that your thoughts are higher than
Lord, help us to live in this principle uh, that you have taught us today. And Lord, it is our prayer for those who have been going through difficulties for a long period of time. Lord, those who are being discouraged, those who are having this kind of problems, Lord, and they are praying for it honestly, but nothing seems to change. Lord, it's our prayer that you will encourage them, that you will strengthen them in the name of your Son, Jesus.